Everyone, I'm Lorenzo and welcome to a video that is sort of a mystery box, meaning that this is a list of PSP games you might not know. Avatar The Last Airbender is pretty disappointing, or at least for me as a fan of this series I expected more. It's not a bad game per se, but it doesn't fit the source material that well in my opinion. The game is a stereotypical hack and slash game. You fight hordes of enemies, level up and upgrade your gear. I can't complain about the gameplay mechanics. They are the standard affair. It's just that unless you're heavily into hack and slash games, you're going to find the game dull, no matter if you're an avatar fan or not. Each of the game's 7 chapters contains a village and a large surrounding area. There are people to talk to and they assign you quests and side quests. It's nice that each character has strong points and downsides. Like for example Katara can heal comrades but has weaker attacks. Sokka has stronger attacks but can't heal other comrades. Also the graphics are horrendous. What is this? A PS1 game. So overall you're going to like the game if you're into hack and slash titles. This is the conclusion. It's a solid hack and slash title that looks horrendous. But hey, in the end it's better to have a good gameplay and bad graphics than the other way around. Bakugan Defenders of the Core, which is a hidden gem no one seems to know about. The game follows a story arc from Bakugan Battle Brawlers New Vestroya, which is not followed in the anime. You start the game by giving a name to a fictional new character the game introduces, and the game has two modes, story mode and battle mode. In story mode you travel the world, you stealth to hide from security drones patrolling the city as you collect core energy, which can be used to upgrade your Bakugan. You can use your Bakugan as a tool, you take down laser traps and other security devices with that to get to the battle scenes. You also find chests that give you ability cards, Vexos passes that allow you to get past security guards if caught, and collectible metal figures of Bakugan. Also the button that triggers an arrow that shows you where you have to go in a level is a nice touch. The battle system is similar to Dragon Ball Z and it also feels like a dumbed down version of Gundam. Maybe because this game deals with large scaled structures fighting over a city. The gameplay feels good nonetheless. You can also use ability cards during fights. The only problem I have with the battle system is the targeting. You target by pressing a button and you're taking plenty of hits until the game decides to point towards the target you wanted to attack. Also battles aren't the only thing you do. There are also minion fights where you need to destroy all Vexus crystals or else enemies keep respawning or there are missions where you protect landmarks. And here it's nice that you can build hologram buildings as decoys. Also there are missions where the two are combined. And the side of the story mode, as I said, there's also a battle mode. And here you don't just one on one. There are three types of battles. Duel, which is two Bakugans fighting until one is knocked out, so a one on one. There is free for all mode. And there is destruction battle, which is two players trying to gain more points than the opponent by hitting and destroying Vexus crystals within the time limit. In battle there are also attribute advantages, which offers more depth to the gameplay. You can evolve some figures and there are 32 figures in the game. I'm really surprised that no one heard about the game. And I'm even more surprised that you can't find a review online about it. This game deserves way more credit. It's a really good game that you can enjoy even if you're not a Bakugan fan. Basha Tarnip, as the title says, is a game of Basha Tarnip. The game has a rule section, so don't worry if you don't know the rules. And as for the gameplay, it's only Basha Tarnip, wrapped in a rather poor presentation. You don't get multiple tables, multiple characters, no. What you see now in the video is all you get. And the quality of the game is that of a flash game. There are barely any animations, the game is more of a slideshow. But hey, in the end, if you're a big Basha Tarni player, it's the best option you've got. Battlezone on the PSP is a huge missed opportunity. 
The game has some really good gameplay mechanics, but problem is it shines best when played in multiplayer. And good luck finding friends with a PSP and a copy of the game. Luckily the game has single player mode too, where you can get used to the great gameplay. As you can see from the video, you control tanks. And there are small tanks, but which are fast, big tanks which are strong, but are slower, and so on. Unfortunately, there are always only 4 tanks in a match. But at least there are power-ups like invisibility, weapon energy, double damage and in the level there are traps like sentinels, lasers and there are 6 different game types. Death zone, which is a standard deathmatch, team death zone, capture the flag, hot zone where you try to capture and hold the territory, blackout where you try to destroy the opposing team's generator before they can blow yours up and lone wolf where you want to gain possession of a bull and hold on to it while everyone else tries to kill you. And there are also 6 maps in the game. The game starts with a story with some sort of NATO training competition and long story short, once you win a match you unlock new tanks, new upgrades and new maps. The AI stuff, so you're going to get through a lot of trial and error to advance in the game, but unfortunately the good gameplay isn't put enough to good use, which will make you love what you're playing, but won't keep you hooked for more. If you're like me, after playing the game, you'll say, yeah, it was nice, and proceed to other games that have more glue to them. Brian Lara 2007 Pressure Play, also called Ricky Ponting 2007 Pressure Play, is a nice try, but the game fails to deliver a satisfying experience for the fans. It's a dumbed down version of the big console versions. And there are far, far fewer gameplay options. Pressure play for the PSP focuses on the World Cup, with all of the official teams, player names and uniforms included. Sadly, that's all it does. There are no test matches, 2020 games and the ICC Champions Trophy. But on the good part, the gameplay mechanics survived and were translated excellently. So even if you don't get that much to play, at least what you play will be enjoyable. And Randolph Ramsey from GameSpot says in his review that the controls are arcadey in the easier difficulties and simulation like in the harder difficulties. Now me, who barely knows the rules of the game, I couldn't test this out, that's why I'm citing him. So in conclusion, the game is very good gameplay wise but not so rich content wise.